will be using to investigate membership features. But before we dig into that project, I'd like to look at the website configuration tool. I'll choose the appropriate menu item here. And on the website tool, and it's just another web page they've built into Visual Studio and ASP.NET, I can choose the provider configuration tab. On this page, I can select the provider. The default, as you see, is the ASP.NET SQL provider, which stores data in an MDF file within your project. Or you can specify a different provider for each feature. I'll go to the Security tab, which allows me to create users and roles. Now, here, I'm going to create a new user. Let's just go choose this, and you can specify a username, a password, an email address, and a question and answer so that if you forget your password, you can be prompted with your question, you supply the answer, they'll email to you your password. All takes care, it's taken care of in ASP.NET. So let's add a user, I'll add me. I'll use my email address. And a security question might be something like, what's your name? And the answer is, your name. Okay, that's simple enough. And I'll create me as a user. And you see we have created the user. And let's go do a couple more, I'll do Mary. Her address, security question, there we go, and let's add one more, I'll add Andy, and Andy's address, and question, and answer, very consistent at least. So I've added all three users for our website, and that's the whole point of, of using forms-based authentication is you keep track of who's a valid user and who's not. So we're done with this concept, so let's go back now and use some roles. Now by default, role management is disabled. I'd like to enable this, well it's actually, on my side I've been playing with this already, I've already enabled it. But by default you'll find that this is disabled, you need to enable it to turn it on. I could disable it here, but I won't. Let's create some roles. I'll go in and create a new role, I need administrator, I'll add that role. And one more role, I'll add as user, add that role, and you'll see now we have some users and roles all set up for us. Okay, let's go back and now let's manage those roles. I can, with those roles, again manage or delete them. If I manage administrator, I can now add users to those roles. So here's one way to do it. I can search for a user, say K, that'd be me, and select I'd like to be an administrator. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to go to the users instead, let's back out, manage users, and for each user, edit the roles they're in. So let's add Andy to the user role, that's fine, and let's go add Mary to the user role. There we go. So we're all done for now. We have, oh, better add me to the user role as well. So let's go to me, edit my roles, and add me to the user role as well. Okay, so now we have me as administrator and everyone as a user on this website. So using this tool isn't very difficult to set up users and roles and add members to those roles. Now we've added information to my database, and if I go look at the database, I should be able to see those roles and users, and also in web.config, see the configuration I've set up. In the Solution Explorer window, you'll find the app underscore data folder, and by default, there's our ASP.NET DB.MDF file, which contains our membership information. Let me double click this to open it up in the Database Explorer window, and over here, I can find a list of tables. Here they all are. Let's start by looking at users. If I right click and choose Show Table Data, we should be able to see all of the current users that are part of my system. And although there are a couple of, no, there's just two users here, one for Kenji, one for Mary, all ready to go. Good, so the user information is here. Notice, by the way, that the password information isn't here. That'd be kind of silly, right? That's stored in a separate table, and it's stored either encrypted or hashed most of the time, depending on how your provider is set up. We'll also find here a list of roles. Let's look at the roles. If I right click on them and choose show table data, we'll see the existing roles that I've created already. I have admins and users. Great. 
Now, of course, it doesn't list who's in each role. That information is in the Users in Roles table. If I come and open that one up, we'll see the schema includes a user ID and a role ID. We we'll close it and look at the data. You'll find that we have a list of primary keys, basically. User IDs matched to role IDs. And if we had more than one user in a given role, we would see more than one user for that role here in this table. Now, if you choose to use SQL Server, this data wouldn't be here in the project. It'd be in the SQL Server database, but stored in much the same way. It's important to remember that unlike membership, role management isn't enabled by default. Now, in my demonstration, it was enabled already because I had been through the demo before myself to prepare. But in real life, role management isn't enabled by default. You can enable it using the web-based tool, or you can turn it on manually in web.config. It's just a simple little attribute in web.config, but you might as well use the tool they provide. Support for roles won't work until you do one of those things. That is, you won't be able to authenticate users in particular roles until you've turned on role support in web.config one way or another. Now, that role manager solves common user to role mapping code. You don't have to write that. It replaces complex authorization code that you'd otherwise have to create yourself. But it does build on the ASP.NET 1.x role APIs. There's nothing new here. They've just wrapped it up and made it easier for you to work with. It's also important to note that this isn't directly tied to membership. You don't have to use them together. But the role manager can be used separately if you want. Normally, people use the membership and the role manager together. But all the role manager does is take a user that's authenticated, and you can authenticate by any means you want, and then determines what role they're in based on lookups within the database. So we can also use this role information to keep users out of particular folders. Let's use that web administration tool to control rules about restrictions based on roles. I brought up the website administration tool in Visual Studio, and I'd like to set up a web rule that allows only certain users or roles into a certain folder. So I can go to the access rules, and I'll create a new one. Here, for my admin folder, I'd like only members of the administrator role to be able to get in. So for the admin folder I've selected, I'll choose to allow administrators. Click OK there to add that. And now I'll add a second rule, which allows in the admin folder to deny everyone else. All users deny. Click OK. And of course, what this is doing is just setting up your web.config for you. You can go manage those access rules. And for the admin folder, you'll see the stuff we just added there. OK. Let's now go look at Visual Studio and see what effect this had on the web.config file within that admin folder. So I'll close this window to go back to Visual Studio. If I look in the Solution Explorer under that admin folder, I'll find that web.config file that we just created. Now, if you don't see it here the first time you try it, you might want to refresh the folder just by right click and choose Refresh Folder there. It may not show up until you do that. But I'll open web.config, and you'll see the settings we just added. We allow administrator, deny everyone else. Of course, if you've used ASP.NET, you could have created this offhand with no work. But at least now using that web administration tool, you don't have to think about it. You can use their tools for setting up authorization based on roles for your website. Now, for this website, I've also want to set it up so that unauthenticated users are redirected to a particular page. So in my web.config for the main website, if I scroll down, I should be able to find that authentication section here. And you'll see here, the tool we're using told it to add this mode equals forms for authentication, because that's what we set up. But I've also added already this login URL, which specified which page to go to within my website for a user who is unauthenticated. So if someone, for example, tries to go to a page within the admin folder, and they're not already authenticated, it will automatically take them to this login page, which we'll look at once we start digging into the controls. This is important, because you have to have some way to tell ASP.NET where to send users who aren't authenticated yet. Also in this example, you'll see that we have the cookie list setting set to use cookies. There are some options you have for working with cookies. 
and we'll look at those on the next